whether you're a creator or you're just an audience member i feel like social media it does have its pros and cons and the cons are also quite a few uh, so it's very it's it's nice to have you know a separate life also away from social media somewhere where you learn new things you're not doing anything for social media you're having a good time and not documenting it i think that's also something i try to actively do and not you know just put up everything that i'm doing in my life on social media Here with me today on Candid Conversations is Dolly Singh. Dolly does not need an introduction, but uh, for, for formality's sake, let's just go ahead and I'll give you a brief intro about her. She's a content creator. She's obviously very famous. She is plagued by selfies whenever she moves out of the house. She is now doing a lot of films. She's doing a lot of web series. She did. Uh, there was a big hoarding in Bombay and a lot of other places also. I'm in Bombay, which I saw of her where she was uh, smiling. Uh, showing all her 32 uh, teeth uh, because of the Colgate ad, which is a big, big brand endorsement, by the way. Uh, she's done a lot of uh, collaborations with uh, celebrities and famous people. And now she is getting into the entrepreneurship space. I have given my intro. I'm going to take a breath and I'm going to let Dolly take over for a bit now. Thank you so much, Kabir. Sometimes, you know, it's like uh, people generally say, oh, no, you don't need an introduction and then they'll move on. But sometimes I'm like, I want to listen to what all I've done. <laughs> you know, you very well summarized everything I've done so far and it feels like, feels like an achievement. Okay, yeah, good. Okay, I missed this. I forgot this. You know, as, a, as an individual, you definitely obviously never take your achievements seriously. So when you hear someone else talk about them, it feels good. So thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So now tell us, tell us about this uh... You turning an entrepreneur, uh, from whatever I know, from whatever your friend Sonali has told me, uh, you will be starting your own range of candles and scents. And I normally don't say this, um, but uh, I must say, this is one collection which I feel, uh, which is by a celebrity, an influencer, a famous figure, which should do well. Just because of the one reason, because of the names which have been given. Okay, let me just read out two, three of the names. There is one name called Shashamara. <laughs> yeah. Okay, which I've been searching for 35 years, but uh, it's taking some time, so I should buy that. There's another one called Saste Nashe, and then there are, of course, a few other ones which I can't mention on the show. But yeah, Dolly, over to you. Tell us about the collection. Market me aayi hai ye adbhut candles jo apki har ichha karengi puri. Har manokamna ke liye hamare paas yahan sab kuch hai. Aaj hi order kare. It's my first uh, ever product that I've you know associated myself with. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. We actually, I had uploaded a video last year in Jan, this year in Jan, it already feels like last year, this year in Jan, uh, where I was talking about, you know, how candle names are funny these days and how they just write something random on candles, you know, whether it is something like, I have, literally in front of me, I have these candles which have, uh, upar likha hai, old books and library and rain, cappuccino, like it's just random names, like it's just one word which doesn't really make any sense yeah. and at the same time I was like if these candles are going to change my life then I would rather attract something that I you know I'm looking forward to and I had said a variety of funny things in that video and a lot of candle brands had reached out to us um, one of them Rad Living um, and turns out I was already a customer of theirs because I um, already enjoy so much of candles you know I think during the pandemic most of us started buying candles because you know you're at home you want your home to smell good and feel good and it's also very therapeutic ke, ek candle jalao to aisa lagta hai zindagi, you know achanak se it's, it's become all sorted and every worry is gone um, so yeah that's how it started and I knew that I wanted to, obviously my personality had to show in that whole candle collection. I wanted to make sure that it kind of screams that it's coming from me. Um, so we did a play on, you know, how these days affirmations and manifestations uh, are happening. You know, you say nice things to yourself in the mirror and manifest your dreams and write it 33 times in your diary and, you know, it'll come true. I don't know whether it comes true or not, but at least I know that it gives you a very positive outlook on life. And I like that. And I thought maybe let's make it funny. Let's turn it around and, you know, give these names. Um, and that's why I wrote. So if you read it correctly, the candle names are very much like I am manifesting such a PR or I am manifesting Goa trip. You know, I am uh, this candle is sustenance or this candle is, uh, you know, I want to be my own sugar mama. 
So I wanted to have that fun with those names. I, we also have aligned all the fragrances and the candles to match with the names so that people don't get confused. Uh, for example, the Goa trip candle smells like an ocean. Um, oh, wow. And, you know, there are funny taglines also on the side of the candles. There's many things, you know, we try to do. And uh, I had a lot of fun because it requires so much of creativity there, you know, to come up with these names, to align the fragrances, to come up with taglines. In fact, we even have a tarot card kind of, you know, Bhavishyavani cards that we're calling them, you know, funny horoscope that you can play with your friends. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a lot of fun and uh, it, a very late but real realization was also that that my mother used to make candles when we were growing up. Um, you know, even like I was a toddler, even then, like she was making those candles and she used to uh, make them at home. It was like, you know, a, a self-employed um, kind of thing. And um, she would sell them to all the retailers in town. I'm from Nainital. So in Nainital, at least at that point, we used to be known for our candles. Mm. And my father used to sell candles. In fact, to this day, he sells candles in his shop. So I'm very also excited to bring my candles to his shop and sell them there. And, you know, it's going to be like a full circle. Um, but yeah, it's been really wonderful. And now we are, we've launched it and I'm really hoping to see a positive response from people. Absolutely. No, all, all the best for it. And like I said, very quirkily named, That's obviously great. after you, after the kind of, uh, you know, characters which you've played. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's as far as the entrepreneurship angle is concerned. Moving on, of yeah. course, uh, to, to the other side of stuff, you know, you being a content creator, etc. Do you feel that it's important to sort of sometimes uh, uh, detox from social media? And do you do that yourself? And why do you feel that it's important? Uh, yeah, of course, I think it is very important. I think we've become the generation who's always, you know, we're just looking like this. I, I'm sure all of our necks are hurting at this point. You know, we're all obsessed with our phones. I've seen, I've noticed this about my friends, you know, initially when I was in college and I had started blogging and everything and people used to always complain, you're always on your phone, you're always doing this and that. And I, I, I used to say that, you know, no, it's my work. Yeah, I'm working, you know, I have to engage and I have to comment and I have to reply. But now I've started noticing that people who are not even in this field are more on their phones than I am, you know, for example. And it's just a generational thing. We are hooked to our screens. So for sure, I definitely, and me being obviously working in that environment and working on the internet, it's very hard for me to kind of take that back, you know, step back and, um, you know, look at it from a distance. But I definitely really try to have a balance there and have some kind of, you know, uh, keep my screen away so whenever I'm uh, you know with my friends doing something out I generally try to keep my phone completely away and not look at it and not be obsessed with it um, I also get irritated with people who are on their phones all the time and while you're engaging and having a conversation yeah. I don't like that which is why I feel like I want to not do that if that's something I don't like I should not do that to other people as well right um, so yeah, definitely. I think, uh, also I feel like this, it, it just consumes you too much. It gives you a lot of stress also, um, whether you're a creator or you're just an audience member, I feel like social media, it does have its pros and cons and the cons are also quite a few. Uh, so it's very, it's, it's nice to have, you know, a separate life also away from social media, somewhere where you learn new things, you're not doing anything for social media, you're having a good time and not documenting it. I think that's also something I try to actively do and not, you know, just put up everything that I'm doing in my life on social media. So that's a, that's a decision I've had to, you know, take and, um, give give a few hours to myself through the day where I do, I'm not looking on my phone or doing something like this because at this point everything I do is on my phone even editing writing so slowly I'm trying to kind of get away from that and you know bring, come back to real life <laughs> and not get immersed in that social media culture and and this is something which you've spoken pretty frequently pretty often about because I've read about it yeah. in previous interviews um, you know, the, the fact that how it is important not to share a lot of stuff on social media. And of course, you've spoken about the cons also. There, there's another thing which I had read, you know, uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, you were not uh, that fond of the term influencer, right? Which has sort of changed. Mm -hmm. So why, yes. why was that? Like, yes. why were you not that fond of the term influencer? Like, what is what was the uh, reasoning behind it? I yeah, I think it was coined only in a very negative, uh, you know, sense. I think it was uh, in New York Times or somewhere some journalist had, you know, first used the word and it always was used in a negative connotation. And I always feel that people, whenever they want to say influencers, they mean a negative 
kind of you know uh, definition to it yeah they always they, they make you feel like influencers are just you know these people who take selfies and post and move on while you know some part of it is obviously true and stereotypes do come from somewhere i also feel like i am just as much a part of this industry and people are calling me an influencer every day um so initially i did hate it and i used to be like no no i'm not an influencer don't call me i'm a content creator i'm this and that i would always try to run away from that you know word um but slowly i realized that you know everything um is a part of this whole thing so influencer world will have that stereotype but will also have people like us and everybody else who's making content so if you keep running away from it the negative connotation will only increase and you know become a thing so i thought you know i'd rather own it and be this influencer that people want to see and be an influencer that i want to see tomorrow and maybe change this definition with time you know change the fact that you know it's not as easy it's it's is it is a full time job and we are not just having fun here we are actually working a lot of work and hard work goes into this so um let's not make everybody feel like oh influencers don't really do much or influencer life is very easy i think that's generally the connotation or generally the world view um and i think that by owning it i definitely want to change it as well you know i want people to know and realize that it's not how it looks if we obviously make it look so easy on social media but it's not not easy right right mm. okay uh, i'm going to i'm going to come to the last question for today actually there's a lot of other stuff which i want to talk to dolly about but we're going to hope that uh, that when she comes to bombay or when she's free next we can chat with her again but for the last question something very important something which uh, uh, you you've played a very important role in doing why do you think uh, it's important to break the taboo of going to the therapist in a country like india Oh I mean um, it's important to go to a therapist anyway but I feel like for a person like me who has some kind of social media following and people following me uh, for whatever reason um it becomes some kind of a responsibility for me to promote you know things like these because I feel like not many are talking about it at least not in the past few years we have all started talking about it but at least if you go back 5 years down the line you will not find anyone talking about therapy in general I mean, or in well, sorry to interrupt but i think it it actually started off in 2014 with that deepika padukone interview and then sort of stuff started happening probably yeah i mean and, and she did talk about a lot of things but therapy as a concept was still you know we were yeah. we were talking about depression and anxiety yeah. and nervousness yeah. and um, you know uh, panic attacks and all of these things but it's been a very slow burn and i feel like we are still not there obviously we yeah. are i am i'm still very privileged i come from um you know i have social media privilege at this point um and i have access to thera- ther- therapists which are around me and i have friends who are already taking therapy so it becomes a much more easier you know step for me at the same time i'm aware that my audience members who are you know watching my content probably don't have that kind of um, life or do, do that that kind of privilege or their circle is not very open to these kind of things whether it's family or friends so i feel like for you know person like me it's very important ki mai to le hi rahi hu which i will and i always tell people that you know you don't have to always take it just because you have issues or you have some problem sometimes you can always also take it just because you want to talk to someone and i know it's very hard you know finding a therapist can be really hard and there's multi multiple challenges to that uh, but i feel like jitna uske bare mein baat karenge we normalize it it just becomes a part of day to day life i've talked to talked about it to my parents also and i'm not saying they understand it 100% but they they're trying and i feel like the more we talk about these kind of things whether it is my content or whether whether i meet someone or my parents the more it will spread and the more it will become normal you know common and i think that's what my at least my feeling towards therapy is that to just make it so normal that it becomes like going to a doctor you know going having a cold and looking out for medication so if you have anxiety or if you are going through some problems and if you feel like you want to talk to someone then therapy should just become the instant you know solution to it rather than parents telling children to be like just so jao are itna mat socho ye tum zyada hi tumhe tumhara acha dimag hai so you know instead of having replies like this ready i would rather have therapy as a solution be like are ye don't think about all this just go for therapy let's look for ah, therapy you know this should matlab you have to think about it and you know the problem is solved <laughs> yeah i mean you know that's the that's very why did you tell me before not to think about it so yeah i know we kind of uh yeah. having having the discussion and opening up about it whether it's therapy or 
where is the medication of the psychiatrist and visiting psychologists all of that stuff exactly exactly all of it all of it has to be normalized right well said well said and i uh, uh, definitely have to uh, add that in a in the current era where we are like bursting with content creators and influencers and uh, what not definitely dolly still remains uh, one of the very um, loved content creators like you know you may have a lot of influencers you may have millions millions of followers like dolly has 1.4 million followers which is 1.4 million more than me but she's definitely a very loved personality uh, and uh, dolly thanks a lot for talking to us all the best for the future all the best for your uh, candle collection and uh, Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Kavir. Hope to see you soon as well.